Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is only a few days away, and while I haven't seen the film yet, I have seen the posters. So today, we're going to talk about the trilogy as a whole, and I'm going to be breaking down some of the pros and cons of each of the posters from all three films. Let's do it. First, we obviously have Guardians of the Galaxy Vol- Oh my gosh, James Gunn is here? <laughs> Come on over! No, you don't want to? Oh, he just wanted me to tell you to subscribe to the channel, Adam Does Movies. Because I post tons of movie-related content each and every week, including poster movie breakdowns. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, James. I'll make sure I let them know. As I was saying before I was interrupted, here we have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. This is a kind of standard but pretty solid poster for the MCU. We see the whole team front and center getting ready for battle. You'll notice they're facing different directions because obviously the attacks are coming from all sides. That lets the audience know that, listen, this is a big scale production. They're not taking on one or two villains. There's an overall army going after these guys. It's set in space. You can see the planes flying towards the lens. A little bit of a blur on them because they're moving fast. Even though there's decent color in the poster, it's still overall pretty dark tones. And the artist wisely knows that he has to elevate the characters, put them in the foreground more, which means lighting them up. The shoulders, the hair, there's all a little bit of an illumination off of them thanks to an explosive solar system behind. He also furthers this depth by adding glowing elements such as the flash of the muzzle of the gun, you have the reflection off of the sword that Gamora has, you have Star-Lord's green laser coming out. This all adds to extra lighting that's desperately needed to keep these characters from fading into the background. Now, the Guardians of the Galaxy is interesting because it does have a fun, playful tone, but there's some very big stakes in these movies. People die, there's dramatic elements, so the poster does a decent job of showcasing that. The characters are all very serious outside of Rocket, who has a little bit of an evil, sinister smile on his face as he's yelling. But outside of the cool clothing style they have, there's not much here that tells you it's going to be that fun of an adventure. The later posters will remedy that aspect. We have a strong font for the title, Guardians of the Galaxy. Kind of an ugly chrome lettering, rusted over a little bit, has a hardened edge to it. That tells you that these guys are not soft. <laughs> these are not your typical characters. Font tells a story, and there's absolutely one being told here. A decent poster, let's see what else they have to offer. I like this poster a lot, and that's typically how things go for me when it comes to design. Less is more, I like the openness of it all. You get to focus on the key elements, which in this case are the lead characters. They're all in these very cool GQ style poses, has a very big fantasy style to it. It kind of reminds me of the Wally poster, that was released originally, and then they ruined it by putting that terrible artwork on the DVD Blu-ray release. That first poster was so good though, where he's looking up at the stars, it's just him against all odds. And that's kind of what you have here. Strangers on a planet, clearly on a mission, none of them are really acknowledging each other exists. They are a team, they are together, yet they're still very much in their own space. There's a ship in the background, which sure, looks cool, but it's also telling the audience they're gonna be traveling to different planets. This is very much a space adventure. They're gonna be going all over. From the studio that brought you Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, the Avengers, comes Guardians of the Galaxy. And then at the bottom, you're welcome. I love that. It's so confident, it's so cocky about it, and that's what the Guardians of the Galaxy is. The Guardians of the Galaxy 2 posters really stepped up their game. I think this is peak Guardians of the Galaxy. You have a kick-ass black and white poster. It looks like an album cover or something you'd see hanging up outside of a concert venue. And these guys absolutely are rock stars already just a second movie in. The only color on the poster is the little Marvel logo and volume two, obviously stating this is the second one. And then it even says obviously right underneath. Again, telling audiences it's still got that playful wit. This might be my favorite Guardians of the Galaxy poster and it goes against what I typically look for in a movie poster. It's all over the place. It is freaking wild. The colors are explosive. They're through the roof. There are so many things to draw your attention here. Look at how all the beams of light point directly to the center of this thing. Even Quill himself has his arms like a clock pulling your eyes to the center, which is him, the main focus of this movie. 
Further drawing you in is this little ripple hyperspace tear that's wrapped around these guys, really enclosing, really drawing the eye into them. And when we dig further into this thing, there are so many little moments peppered throughout that take place in this movie. You have the pirates getting jettisoned out of the side of the spaceship. You have that golden alien race peekabooing outside Peter Quill's head. The giant space octopus they fight at the beginning of the movies flying off to the left. It's just a rad poster all around and really has an identity of its own. Let's see how Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 steps up. Unfortunately, this is the best Guardians poster I could find, and it's the IMAX release. It's again colorful, the whole team is there, not just floating heads like you see on a lot of poster. We get full framed figures. I appreciate the trippy aesthetic it's going for. It looks illustrated in a way like it was drawn over in Photoshop. There's a lot of elements at play here. You have space actually seeping through these characters different colors moving in and out, blending. The overall impression I get from this poster is that these characters are tired and they're starting to fade into the galaxy. They've built up a legacy and now it's time to rest those weary bones. That's what this poster's telling me. Nothing dramatic, nothing saying I gotta run out and see this movie because of this visual. No, you're going to see the movie because you saw the other two and they're awesome. So you wanna finish this. You want an epic conclusion, but the poster does the opposite. It's like, eh, we're, we're all kind of just tired at this point. We're, we're sitting down, lounging, having a nice little vacation, having a nice little holiday. I'm also a little puzzled why Gamora singled out here. She's by herself, not really part of the team, and I'm guessing it's because this is Gamora 2.0. This is the version that we haven't seen before outside of Endgame for a little while because the previous version died. I do like that psychedelic feel they have, but when you compare it to the previous posters, it's definitely a step down for me. All right, here's an example of less is more that doesn't really work for me, mainly because I don't find ground all that interesting. Now there is a story being driven in this poster, which is always the sign of a successful piece of art. However, it's not done in a very interesting way. We see Rocket, now the actual protagonist of this thing, and then just shadows of the iconic characters behind him. We can easily make out who's who just based on their legs. There is really harsh bloom lighting hitting us from that background, and I understand it's necessary to get these shadows to cast how they are, but that doesn't make it pleasing on the eyes. And this one's just not doing it for me. Let's do one more quickly for volume three, and it's only to point out the fact that all these characters look off in this one. Peter Quill looks like he took that weight gain jab to heart from Endgame, got himself the bow flex, but stopped hitting the weights. He's very skinny on this cover. Nebula, what in the hell happened? She's doing probably the most unflattering pose a tall, thin woman could do. All of her shape is completely gone. She's very boxy. It's just a bad look for a cover. But even looking at Gamora, she's doing the hot cheerleader pose, but nothing about this looks very good. And Zoe Saldana is one of the most beautiful creatures on Earth. And they all look kind of miserable here. Again, the poster's telling me these guys aren't the heroes anymore. They're just people put in a sad situation. They all look deflated. I mean, except for Swole Groot, who seems very happy to be there. He's been hit in the gym. He's been hit in the Iron Temple. There you have it, my thoughts on the Guardians of the Galaxy posters. There's plenty more that have been released fan-made ones, some by smaller studios for different promotional events that are actually quite a bit better than the officially released ones. I'll put some of them up right now. I don't really know how to give credit to the proper venues for these, but at least we can look at them and appreciate what the graphic artist has created. Personally for me, I think the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 posters knocked it out of the galaxy. I want to hear from you though. What do you think about these? Any of them really do it for you? Leave a comment below. Appreciate a like if you can throw one my way, and if you are subscribed, which James Gunn has told you to do, so I assume you listened, also hit the notification bell. He forgot to mention that part, but that really helps these show up in your feed when further videos come out. And hopefully, I'll see you next time. Take care.